Let's dive right in, shall we? Jane, Emma, and Carla are working out in a gym. One of them isn't being careful enough. Who is it? It's Carla. Look, she's doing exercises while chewing gum. She could accidentally choke on it. Look at Matt and Olivia. They're both cooking dinner. Matt is using a stove, and Olivia is using a grill outside. Which of them is doing something wrong? It's Matt. He forgot to turn the stove on. Nor was a married man, and his wife had a twin sister. One day, the twins decided to trick him. They both pretended to be his wife to see if he'd find the right person. Unfortunately, Noor got way too confused. Can you find his real wife? Look at the wedding picture of Noor and his wife. She has a tattoo on her right arm. So his wife must be the woman on the left who also has a tattoo on her right arm. Willem and Sean were caught by the police close to the graffiti that had just appeared on a building. One of them painted it, but both denied doing anything. Who do you think is lying? It was Willem. Look, there's some paint on her hands and shirt. Drake and Thor are both on vacation. Drake is skiing in the mountains with his girlfriend, and Thor is surfing with his best friend. Look at them now. Which one of them is in danger? Drake! He's screaming in the mountains. It's not safe because it can cause an avalanche. Now, let's find some pet owners. For example, look at these three girls. Can you figure out who the cat belongs to? Its owner is the girl on the right. Look at her legs and hands. She has some scratches. Very typical for cat owners. Now, there are three people sitting in the park. See that dog playing there? Who does it belong to? To the guy in the middle. Look, he has a leash. These guys, Ian, Noah, and Luke, are basketball players. They're getting ready for the game in the changing room. Which of them is Noah? It must be this guy, the one who's not wearing shoes. Look, his shoes are in the locker with the name tag Noah. Esme was walking in the forest and got lost. She had been wandering for hours until she came across a witch's house. The witch was busy with a new spell and had a riddle for Esme. If the girl managed to solve it, the witch would let her go. If Esme failed, she'd have to stay with the witch forever. So the witch had six test tubes. The first three were empty, and the last three were full. For the spell, full and empty tubes had to alternate. Esme had to solve this problem, but she could only touch one tube. How can she do it? Esme should take the fifth tube and pour the liquid from it into the second one. A bank was robbed on a Friday evening. There were no customers and no signs of a break-in, which meant it was one of the bank employees. The robbery was discovered by the bank director, Mr. Perry. There were three main suspects, Ms. Cott, Mr. Mendez, and Ms. Morgan. All of them denied being anywhere close to the safe. But one of them lied. Who was it? Pay attention to the footprints. 
These must belong to Mr. Perry. But there's another pair, which must be heels. Mr. Mendez is wearing sneakers, and Miss Morgan is wearing flats. Miss Cott is the only one wearing heels. The footprints are likely to be hers. So she lied. Mrs. Nichols has four daughters and a son. The oldest daughter's name is April. She's an artist. The second daughter is December. She's into sports. Her third daughter is August, and she's keen on cooking. May is the fourth one, and she likes reading. Their brother Adam is the youngest in the family. How is his name connected to his sister's? The first letters of the girls' names make up the name Adam. Another family riddle for you. Ava is Bella's sister, Bella is Ella's sister, and Ella is Ruby's mother. Who is Ruby for Ava? If Ava is Bella's sister and Bella is Ella's sister, it seems like the three of them are sisters. Since Ruby is Ella's daughter, then both Ava and Bella are Ruby's aunts. So Ruby is Ava's niece. Take a look at these friends at the beach. Which of them is a robot? It must be this girl. Look, it's very hot outside and everyone is sweating, except her. That's kind of odd. The police also broke into three apartments. In one of them, a robot lives. Can you guess where? Look, there's a lot of machine oil in the bathroom. I'll bet it belongs to the robot. What about this photo? Can you spot a robot here? It's summer, and everyone is wearing shorts and tops. Except for this guy. He's wearing long pants, a long sleeve shirt, and even gloves. He must be hiding his body. I'd say it's him. Here's a photo of people sitting in a cafe. Can you spot a robot here? It must be this lady, since she's not drinking or eating anything. Guess why? Well, robots can't eat human food, obviously. Another peek into some people's houses. One room belongs to a robot, but which one? It must be this one. Look, there's a whole bunch of bolts and spare parts in the wardrobe. Have a look at this group of friends. Can you tell which of them is a robot? It must be this guy. There's some steam and sparks coming from it. Perhaps it's a robot that needs some renovations. Aiko has won a game show, and she can finally get her prize. But there's a catch. One last task. There are three boxes, and she can pick one to take with her. One box is filled with $100 bills. Another box contains 5-cent coins. And the last box has both bills and coins. The boxes look exactly the same, and the girl can't touch any of them. The boxes have labels. Bills on the left one, coins in the middle one, and bills and coins on the right one. All the boxes are labeled wrong. Aiko can't look inside any of the boxes, but she can ask for one sample from any box. What should Aiko's strategy be to identify the box filled with bills only? Since all the boxes are labeled wrong, Aiko should ask for a sample from the bills and coins box. If there's a bill there, then that's the one she needs. She should simply take it. If there's a coin, then it's the box with coins. 
In that case, the remaining boxes contain bills and bills with coins. And since the labels are incorrect, the one with bills is the one marked with the label coins. The day that is tomorrow for the day after tomorrow is as far away from Wednesday as the day that is yesterday for the day before yesterday. So, what day is it today? The tomorrow for the day after tomorrow and the yesterday for the day before yesterday are exactly three days away from today. If they're equally far away from Wednesday, then today is Wednesday. Meadow loved animals and she decided to get some frogs. She talked to her mom about it and they made a decision. Only one of these three statements is correct. 1. Meadow got at least one frog. 2. Meadow got at least five frogs. 3. Meadow got fewer than five frogs. How many frogs did Meadow get? So, only one statement is correct. If it's the first one, then the other two must be wrong. In this case, she can't get five or more frogs, so it doesn't work. If the second statement is correct, then she has at least five frogs. But then the first statement is automatically correct, too. Let's say the third statement is correct, so she got fewer than five frogs. Automatically, the second statement is wrong. But for the first statement to be wrong, too, she should have got fewer than one frog. So it seems that, after talking to her mom, Meadow got zero frogs. Maybe instead, her mom got her a dog, which would at least rhyme. Susan found out that her favorite pop band was playing a private concert for VIP clients in a luxurious club. She decided to sneak inside through the back door. But unfortunately, Susan came across a strict guard behind the door. He refused to let Susan inside hey. without a password. But, luckily for her, there was a hint on the guard's t-shirt. The hint was 2 infinity plus B D. Susan deciphered the hint and was allowed to enter. Can you guess what the password was? It was 2 infinity and beyond. After the concert, Susan met up with her friend Bobby. Bobby was an expert in ghost activity. He invited Susan to go ghost hunting to a creepy old hotel. Of course Bobby had state-of-the-art equipment. Once they arrived at the hotel, his equipment indicated there was strong paranormal activity going on. It looked like the ghost had a sense of humor and wanted to play hide-and-seek with them before it revealed itself. It led Bobby and Susan into a room with four doors. Each door had an inscription on it with some clues. The sign on door A said, it's behind B or C. The sign on door B claimed, it's behind A or D. Door C said, it's in here. And door D stated, the ghost isn't here. Bobby and Susan looked very confused until a note appeared next to their feet. It said, three of the inscriptions are false and one is true. Can you guess which door leads to the ghost? Let's see how this works. If the ghost was behind door A, then both statements B and D would be true. If it was behind door B, then both A and D would be true. If the ghost was behind door C, then A, C, and D would be all true. But if the ghost was behind door D, then the statements on all the doors would be false, except for that on door B. This fits the rules, so the ghost must be behind door D. The next morning, Bobby called Susan again, saying that he had a surprise. He had won two tickets to Susan's favorite theme park and asked her if she wanted to go. Before she answered, though, Bobby warned her that she had to crack a very difficult riddle. Only then would he give her a ticket. She agreed. For a school challenge, 100 students received a number between 1 and 100. Each student was instructed to go inside a classroom that had exactly 100 boxes randomly numbered from 1 to 100. Inside each box, there was a slip of paper with a random number between 1 and 100 on it. 
Now, each student needed to enter the classroom on their own and find the box that contained the slip of paper with their number on it. But in order to do so, each of them was only allowed to open a maximum of 50 boxes. They were instructed to leave the room exactly as they found it, and they weren't allowed to communicate with other students once they'd left the room. If all of the students managed to find their numbers inside the boxes, they would each get $100. But if one of them wasn't able to find their number, none of them would be able to win the prize. Bobby asked Susan if she knew the best strategy for all of the students to find their numbers and win the prize. After a few hours, Susan called Bobby with the answer. She managed to figure out the riddle. Can you guess what she answered? This riddle isn't obvious, but let's see how it works. If each student searched for their numbers randomly, they would each have a 50% chance of finding the box with their number inside. This is because there were 100 boxes and they were allowed to look inside 50 of them. However, the probability of all of them finding their own number following this random strategy is absurdly small. So, to increase their chances of collectively finding their numbers, they would need a better approach the students could use something called the loop strategy. After entering the classroom, they should go directly toward the box that has their number on top of it. The number inside probably won't be their number, but that's okay. They should check the number inside the box and go look for the box with that same number on top of it, and so on and so forth. They should keep doing this until they find the paper with their number on it. This strategy means there's more than a 30% chance of the students finding their numbers and winning the prize. It's not a huge probability, but hey, at least they'll have fun trying to figure it out. One afternoon, Susan found her father, Frank, in the living room. Frank was a private investigator and he had just received a message revealing the address of the town's most dangerous criminal, Dirty Jack. He decided to go check the area, even though he didn't know what the criminal looked like. The address turned out to be an old warehouse. When he busted inside, he found four people sitting at a table. They were a carpenter, a truck driver, a mechanic, and a firefighter. Without any hesitation, Frank arrested the firefighter. How did he know it was the criminal? The firefighter was the only man in the room. The rest of the people were women. Bobby and Susan decided to go grab a cup of coffee. But when their orders arrived, Bobby's drink came with a fly in it. He called the waiter and asked him to change his cup. The waiter brought him another cup of coffee. But two seconds later, Bobby called the waiter again and said, Hey, that's the same cup. How did he know? Because Bobby had already put sugar in his coffee. And when he tasted the new drink, it already had sugar in it. Susan and her family went on vacation to their country house, but unfortunately, it was raining heavily. It kept raining for 13 days. When it rained in the morning, the afternoon was beautiful and clear. And when it rained in the afternoon, the next day was blessed with a clear, sunny morning. Overall, Susan's family experienced 11 nice mornings and 12 nice afternoons. Can you find out the total number of days they spent in the country house? The total number is 18 days. Here's how you can figure it out. Let's call clear afternoons X, clear mornings Y, and periods of time with no rain O. This equation represents the number of days with rain, X plus Y equals 13. And here are the days with clear mornings, Y plus O equals 11. And this equation represents the days with clear afternoons, X plus O equals 12. If we solve these three equations, we'll learn that x equals 7, y equals 6, and o equals 5. So the total number of days is 18. Bobby started his morning by jogging in the park near his house. When he returned, he got to know some very unpleasant news. Someone had stolen his car. He questioned three of his neighbors. Henry said, I've been playing video games for the past 12 hours and haven't left my basement. Rosie said, I'm a gardener. I've been planting daisies in the public area all morning, and I think I saw a suspicious man who opened the car using a knife. 
Jack said, I saw your car when I went out for groceries, but when I returned home, it was gone. Who's lying? Rosie. She said she planted daisies, but look, there are only rose bushes in this area. One day, Susan found a box on her desk with a note that read, What can run, but never walks, has a mouth, but never speaks, has a head, but never weeps, has a bed, but never sleeps. Can you decipher this riddle? The correct answer is a river. Kentucky Fried Chicken was founded in 1930. It's been around for 92 years, but can you tell which one of these logos is the correct one? Yes, here's the one. What about Pringles? What's the correct logo? This one right here. Costco logo, what's your guess? You got it. Next up, Taco Bell. What's the correct logo? It's this one. Oreo is the best-selling cookie brand in the whole world. Do you think you can find the correct logo here? Okay, that was easy. It's this one. Mmm, Doritos. Right or left? Yep, it's the left one. Haribo is a German brand, and it's 101 years old, so it's older than KFC. You see it all the time on your gummy bears packs. Find the correct logo now. Here it is. Burger King, or as it's known in Australia, Hungry Jacks. Yeah, copyright laws made them change the name. But the question is, where is the one? Found it! A lot of people love them, and you're probably one of them. But do you know the logo well enough? It's this one with a silhouette. Definitely makes it cooler. Fanta isn't even in the top 15 best-selling soda drinks, but you can't deny that it's famous, so what's the correct logo? Here it is! A place where you can literally get anything, so find the right store to go to. Yes, of course, it's this one. What's the correct Wendy's logo? This one, right. Did you know that NASA is short for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration? Good for you, but what's their correct logo? It's this one. I'm having some hardcore flashbacks here. Sesame Street has been running since 1969, so it's been around since your parents were little. We know it all too well, but what is the correct logo? It's this one. 123 Sesame Street. Very easy to remember. What is the correct Ralph Lauren logo?
you got it. However fancy iPhones and Apple OS might be, Android still owns about 70% of the market. So what's the correct logo? This one here. I know, I know. Switching colors is a hard game, but you see it so often that you can just trust your instincts to pick the right one. Yes, this one right here. You got it. What's the correct Walmart to go shopping at? Can't confuse this one with anything else. What's the correct logo here? Here it is. Amazon started out as a garage bookstore in the 90s. Now it sells almost everything and everyone knows it. So can you find the correct logo? It's this one. What's the correct Huawei logo? This one right here. The ancient Olympic Games were staged in Olympia, but the first modern ones were held in 1896 in Athens, Greece. This one's tough. What's the correct logo? This is the one. The voice, left or right, what do you say? It's the right one. Snickers is the best-selling candy bar in the world. What's the correct logo? This one here. eBay often helps you out, but can you find its correct logo? Yeah, it's right here. What do you say about this one, 7-Eleven? Here it is, of course. Paramount gave us so many cool movies, and you've seen their logo hundreds of times. Not for too long, though. Was it enough for you to spot the correct one? This is the one. There's just one mountain. Can you find the correct Puma logo? That's the one. What about Adobe? Can you spot it? It's right here. Here comes a trickier one. What do you gotta say? Gotcha, it's this one. Whether you're a FIFA kind of person or the Sims kind of person, you sure have something to thank Electronic Arts for. What's the correct logo, by the way? This is the one. Skoda is a Czech company, and at first they were producing bikes. Now they make cars as well. What's the correct logo? Here it is. Shazam helped you find that cool song so many times, but do you remember their logo? Here it is. Here comes your language study buddy, Duolingo. What's the correct logo here?
It's this one. Google Drive is up next. You use it all the time. Just trust your gut. That's the one. Can you spot the correct Flickr logo? Here it is. Hasbro was founded in Rhode Island by three brothers in 1923. At first, they were selling textile remnants. Now, they sell toys and games. What's the correct logo? It's this one. Your Uber is here. Make sure to pick the right one. Here it is. The game is getting wild. Sorry. If you don't know, just try to guess. This is the one. Even if you're not a hardcore Minecraft player, you must know because it's just too popular. Can you find the right logo? It's this one. What's the correct NBC logo? Yeah, it's the one on the right. What about Levi's? This is the one. What's the logo of The Incredibles? Yeah, from that cool Pixar movie. What's the correct logo? This one. You're my hero. What about the logo of Captain America? Which one is correct? Yeah, this is the one. Okay, the last one for today. Show me the true Pandora. Yes, here it is. Great job. Hey, are you an expert in brands? Choose the correct logo and get one point for each right answer. Level. Easy peasy. Both apples are half eaten, but which one is eaten the right way? Ah, I see. I start eating apples from that side, too. Can you figure out which one is the NASA logo? Aha! No yellow color around the blue meatball. Got it. A little twittering bird, but which one? Yeah, because the one on the left looks too fluffy. Do you know what the Rolex logo looks like? This crown definitely looks more natural. The crocodile on the left or the crocodile on the right? That is the question. Right. No wonder I thought the crocodile on the left looks too bumpy to decorate your polo shirt. I'm sure you'll deal with this one hands down. And, of course, the real Adidas logo is on the left. I won't give you any hints, but I know the answer. Nee, 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 nee.
told you so. Ah, this is a tough one. Gotta go and check my wardrobe. Or is it cheating? So, Puma's big feline is jumping to the left. Ah, good to know. Something is off with one of these logos, but you gotta puzzle it out on your own. Yeah, Citroen has two, not three upward-facing arrows on its logo. Ah, this one is simple. I didn't even have any doubts. I guess you need to do your laundry yourself to know the right logo for this washing powder, huh? So, green at the top, red at the bottom. Got it. So, which logo looks more familiar? The famous car manufacturer opted for the first logo. Hmm, they both look okay to me. So, which one? Less red, more blue. I see. Level? Tricky. It's a pity I'm more of a tea person. I knew this one looked more familiar. Well, I'm not an expert in gas and oil, but I might know the answer. And I was right. This one is indeed tricky. Now I know what the logo of my favorite pizza place looks like. Do you know which logo this famous electronics company has? Oh, it was a lucky guess. The difference between these logos is tiny, but one of them is wrong. The one on the left represents the world-known software and computer manufacturer. Coca-Cola or Coca-Cola? And the answer is Coca-Cola. <laughs> Just kidding. The first logo is the correct one. Yummy. I'm sure you'll get this one right. Uh-oh, I thought this logo was a bit wavier. Now, we'll find out how often you watch MTV. And it turns out I watch it often enough. <laughs> um, they look the same to me. I see the difference now, but it's too late. Duh. Red, white, blue versus red, white, blue. Tough choice. If you pick the logo on the left, you're absolutely right. I'm not sure about this one. Do you know the answer? I knew the logo on the right was the one. Social media fans, use your superpowers. Who would have thought? I'm not an Insta person. Ha! I've used this service often enough to know the right logo.
is the one on the left. Level mind-boggling. Wow, they weren't kidding about mind-boggling. Okay, the right logo is the one on the left. Got that? Do you like making and sharing short videos? Then you must know which TikTok logo is the right one. Did you pick the one on the left? Then you totally nailed it. How often do you eat burgers? Let's check. It seems I should treat myself to burgers more often. Oh no, colors again? Wow, that was a tough one. You mean I had to keep in mind the color of his bow? Apparently, I'm good at distinguishing colors. Was your guess correct? I've been to Subway hundreds of times. Never knew their logo can be so confusing. The one on the right. Ah, my intuition didn't let me down. And now, you want me to choose between two blue colors? Wicked. First, the darker blue, then the lighter. That's the right logo. You must be kidding me! The logo on the right seemed more familiar, and no wonder it's the correct logo. Wait, are they even different? Ah, I see. They decided to make the robot's antenna as simple as possible. I use this messenger often enough to know the correct logo. Oops. I was sure it was the one on the left. KFC and its logo. Do you remember which is the one? It's the logo on the left. Look at the apron and the stripes on it. Wide stripes or thin ones? The correct logo has narrow stripes. Um, I mean, they're both colorful and pretty. I cheated by googling the Google logo. No pun intended. Are you ready to see how well you've done? Here you go! If you've got 0 to 13 points, you probably don't pay much attention to brands. The most important thing for you is how well whatever you need works. If your score is 14 to 26 points, you often buy branded things. But you don't care enough to remember what their logos look like. If you have 27 to 39 points, brands and logos are likely to play an important role in your life. You also have a sharp eye and pay close attention to the smallest details.